Hey everyone and welcome to another video. So today we're checking out a product from a company called CamCamp. This is their SC44 all-in-one MVR system. So it's a four camera security system that comes ready set up in the box and it comes with a seven inch touchscreen monitor that also includes the sort of storage portion and that's where all your surveillance is captured. You can see on screen some of the key features of the actual package. So it comes with four 2.5K cameras. It has four solar panels, one for each camera. It has the monitor. It has two way audio for being able to speak to and also hear what going on with the ca cameras themselves. It has H.265 video compression, so the file sizes that it records are quite small. It has multi-device sharing, so despite this being a NVR system with a monitor, you can also use the smart app on both Android and iOS. It comes with a 64 gig TF card included, so you don't need to pay any additional subscriptions. There is an option where you can sign up to cloud storage, but you don't need to use it. The cameras themselves have 350 degrees of pan and 90 degrees of tilt for 360 degrees coverage. And the best Thing about it is they come fully set up out of the box so this is everything that you get in the pack so you can see there's quite a lot of hardware included and literally everything that you need to be able to get these installed and be fully up and running here you can see the actual solar panels themselves similar to what i've had in the past with eufy but these are way thinner here you can see the actual cameras so each one does have six led spotlights on the actual main head of the the camera themselves and it does come with all the mounts fixings everything that you need including the solar panels to keep these powered up fully here you can see just how thin this solar panel is and it's also quite light so whatever you mount it you're not really going to have any issues with it the clips for the cameras themselves only take two screws so really easy to install. Here you can see the actual monitor itself. So it is a seven inch monitor that is included. On the back, you do have two fixings holes for wall mounting this, as well as the vents and for the built-in speaker as well, to be able to hear what's going on. The two antennas can't be removed as far as I'm aware. So they do have to stay there. Here you can have a closer look at the actual main cameras themselves. Once again, these do have two antennas for the signal as well. On the bottom of each one, you have the reset button as well as the TF card slot if you want to record individually on each camera. And on the back side where the mount goes, you have the input for the USB power. Okay, so here's camera one. It's connected or attached to the top of the porch facing the front of the driveway. As you can see, the solar panel is literally just resting on top of the porch cover. So it's not mounted in any special way. And if I zoom out, you'll see that there is shade between both the houses. So you're not getting direct sunlight on here for much more than I'd say an hour, two hours. So not a lot. Okay, so here is camera two. So as you can see, this one was installed facing backwards from the front gate. Once again, similar to the first one, so the solar panel is just dropped on top. It's not actually angled or anything. These the, Both solar panels are literally just sat on top of that porch and just facing straight up. So the fact that they can still keep it charged 100% is quite impressive. So here is the third camera. So this one, as you can see, quite a line of different cameras that I'm testing. Uh, this one is facing back into the garden from where the house is. This one does have the solar panel on top of the roof, but as you can see for most of the day, it's not actually in direct sunlight um, with where it is because most of the sun's coming from that direction. So it is around about half five, six o'clock at the moment. So um, yeah, it would have got sunlight during earlier hours but this time it's not getting direct sunlight what this one once again uh, still being kept at 100 percent still fully charged okay and coming on to the fourth camera so as you can see this is connected to the shed or mounted to the shed I, sh I should say this is the only one where the solar panel is probably in the perfect position to be able to get maximum amount of sun so throughout the day it's still getting a good a decent amount if i angled it further similar to that one there which is connected to the eufy camera then that's probably best scenario but even as it is it still managed to stay charged perfectly fine setting it up as you can see it's very very simple so this literally just drops down onto the mount now one thing i will say straight away is these need to be mounted in a place where somebody can't just come and grab the camera because you can't simply just pull that up and it will come off so 
that mount only has two screws for the actual camera itself and then it just slots down into it you have the USB-C port on the bottom there and then this one is just similar to the Eufy ones where it's just three three fixings or three screws that actually hold that on but like I said with the other two cameras with the setup that I've had with those you don't necessarily need to use them out if you're putting it in a place where you can just drop it somewhere flat so all of these cameras have been able to maintain full charge these back two garden ones have probably got much more usage but the front one facing the driveway that would have had a lot more traffic and sort of activations in the past week two weeks than these one would have uh, depending on whether they're detecting everything or whether they're detecting just people as you can see the lights came on so it has detected motion and that would have shown up on the screen as well but all the cameras have been perfectly fine for charge and yeah i was quite surprised because obviously i've had these and depending on where you put them even they can die out with a solar panel connected so the fact that these have stayed charged in all locations regardless of whether they're getting direct sunlight or not is actually quite impressive okay so welcome back so in this portion of the video we're going to take a look at the actual monitor and take a look at the features of it so when you take this out of the box everything is already pre sort of configured so everything's set up all of the cameras are automatically connected to the actual monitor so there's nothing that you need to actually do let's say for example one of the cameras loses connection or you do what i did where you connect one of the cameras directly to the phone rather than to the monitor then it is actually quite simple so all you do is so when you click anywhere you get this little menu pop up so this is your mute you have your home which we'll take a look at you have your zoom you have your playback you have your i think this ptz control and then the last one is your sort of menu view so depending on how you want it and it switches between the first two the last two and then obviously going back to all four and then if you just click on each, any camera individually double tap then it will go into full view and if you double tap again it goes back and then right now it's playing after a little while it will automatically pause again playback is done it initially goes into the first channel so channel one channel two channel three channel four they're the four cameras and then depending on if there's any content on there it will show you and then all you do is you go back to this calendar and then the ones in green are the ones with actual content recorded okay so what we'll do is first thing we'll do is look at match code so let's say for example one of the cameras aren't working all you would do is come into here so there are your four cameras you would hit the x on here to clear the the actual uh, mac address that, that's what it looks like to me and then all you would do is hit match code and then as long as the camera is within range then it will actually connect very simple to actually set up and even if you do something wrong you can actually fix it quite easily using this the thing that i don't like about the monitor is the battery life on it is very very poor so i had this on charge constantly and then i unplugged it for roughly around about five to ten minutes when i was actually setting up the cameras in various different locations and it died within that time so i'm not sure whether it's a glitch with my unit but the battery life on the monitor is very very poor so ideally you do want to keep this plugged in you can unplug it and walk around for a short period but as i say because there's no sort of real indicator for battery on here then apart from that one for me it just drained really quickly right so coming back to the home menu so the first one as, as i've said we've already had a look at this and you have a few options obviously you can transfer to a usb stick you can clear stuff you can zoom in you can lock uh, videos that you want to make sure don't get deleted you have your normal play functions along the bottom so back play forward your mute your calendar one we've already had a look at and then this one is for anything on that particular camera for that particular day so you can then cycle through them at the moment because nobody's up nothing will be recorded on any of these cameras and then for each camera you do have to come in and select the calendar and then go into each individual day that's one thing i don't like so the the way it's laid out is not very intuitive i would have preferred it if you just select the day and then it showed you every event from every camera rather than you having to separately go through each camera and then choose which day which time all that kind of thing next one is system setup so this is quite simple and the way you obviously navigate is along the bottom for your pages so these are your main things so language time setup wireless internet your wireless channel now one thing to note is when you initially set this up if you can't connect your phone app to this then it's because you don't actually have that wi-fi icon so this will automatically connect to all the cameras regardless of whether there's wi-fi or not but it does need wi-fi in order to connect to any
any smart devices like your phone. So you do need to come in here and put your internet in. You can also change the wireless channel. I just left it as the default. You have camera audio enable, and then you can select each camera individually to say which one you want recording, which one you don't. You have network service, so you can connect this to Alexa. You have volume setup for each individual camera, and you have auto close, which I believe takes you back to the camera's view if you're on the home menu. And then you, you do have the screensaver, which I've got set to five minutes, and that just displays the date and time. Next one is re your recording setup. So very simple, you, you can set a schedule, you can manage the actual recordings. So as you can see, it, it's not recorded a lot, mainly due to where I've placed the, the cameras. They're not getting triggered quite as much as a lot of my other security cameras that I've got, but it's just because of where I wanted to test the charging function of these particular cameras. And then you have the overwrite function. So if it did run out, it would just start deleting the oldest clips and go back over. Your match code we've already had a look at. Your alarm setup. So this is to do with any motions or anything like that. So you can select it to automatically go full screen on any cameras that do detect motion and then you can come in and change all these functions individually for each camera as well. Each camera does have the spotlight alarm so it will turn on the spotlight. I've left this off because all the locations have got it I've got additional lighting so by turning the spotlight on it'll just be draining the battery faster and I wanted to give it a fair fair test. And the last one is system manage and this is all of your sort of system settings so your system info, factory settings, changing the password. If you do get any future upgrades then you can do it through this which I presume would have to be done through a USB and not via Wi-Fi. I did try the Wi-Fi updates and it doesn't seem to do anything. So that's all of the main sort of functionality. Now the one thing that I did want to touch on is these two front top cameras. So the rear ones are in my back garden where I get plenty of sunlight pretty much all year round. So any camera that I install in the back garden, it's very rare that they're not able to maintain a full charge. So if we just double tap this, you can see that the green little icon there, it shows that yeah, everything is fully charged. Same for this one, it's fully charged. Now this one in particular, where it's located, it doesn't get that many detections, but you can see it is actually still fully charged. And I've got all of these connected via the solar panels. And one of the things about this is every camera that I've installed in this location, it usually dies out after a little while because it's basically in shade there's no direct sunlight going onto these panels. And the way that I've installed the panels is literally I've just left them flat on top of the porch cover. So I've not installed these at an angle. I've not pointed them to the sun. I've literally just had them pointing straight up. And as you can see, that one is still fully charged. And this one probably gets more triggers, but not as many from what I can detect. And that is still showing full, fully charged as well. I've not had any disconnects. So as you can see with this one, this camera is all the way at the back of my garden. So it's probably a good, 20, 30 meters away at least from where this unit is at the moment. And obviously this is right now, it's being recorded in my sort of cinema room and that's right at the front of my house. So the, a fair distance between where this camera is and where I am at the moment. Usually this isn't kept in this room. I've just brought it in here for this particular video. So it looks like it's not actually being able to connect to that one at the moment. Let's try the back one. Oh, actually that might be why, because it's playing the feed from, from that camera there. Whereas I want it to play the back garden feed. Let's see if it switches over. It does show two two bars of signal. No, I think there's just too much distance between where we are at the moment and where this is being kept at the moment. Usually when it's in the kitchen, it'll work fine and it does actually show any triggers. So it'll make it full screen. So yeah, the, the screen itself is very simple to use. I wouldn't say it's laid out the best. I think the UI could do with a lot of work in terms of making it more user-friendly. What I would like to see ideally is all your recordings done daily. So so it, it literally sorts every camera out. Obviously with this, because of how got it positioned, essentially it could track somebody from walking down the driveway to the back garden and then all the way back to where my shed is. So there's no reason why all of that kind of stuff can't get integrated into the software. That's something that I'd probably like to see brought into it. Next, we'll take a look at the iPhone side of things and I'll try and get you some samples pulled from one or the other as well. Okay, so I have a screen recording going and what we'll do is take a look at the mobile app. So coming into it, as you can see, the layout is very similar in terms of the cameras. So along the bottom, you have your events, you have contact us, you have mail, 
and then you have your profile if you want to go and set everything up now the events on this is how i would want them to be displayed on the actual monitor so as you can see when i click onto this it shows every single event for when somebody's come in or come out regardless of which camera is actually selected and it does give you the information on the side there so it tells you which camera and what sort of motion or event has occurred on here you can see it does give you the option where you can choose to sort of filter out different cameras and then obviously you can change the dates as well so i think the events on the mobile app is a lot better it's a lot more user intuitive and more towards what you would expect it to be like the mobile app does have an option of cloud recording and if you wanted to you could make use of this obviously the whole point of me showcasing this is that it can be used completely standalone there's no need for you to actually do this this is just for all of the extra benefits so anybody that wants those they can choose to do it but you don't have to the actual unit came with a tf card pre-installed and as you've seen from the actual recording, that was more than enough for everything that you need. So that's the cloud section. Events, we've already had a quick look at, so you can filter different channels and then you can go through and change different dates as well. Anything with a little dot is when it has recordings and the ones previous to that, I've had this installed for quite a while. The only reason there's none previous is because I just didn't have the alarm section enabled. So it wasn't actually pulling any information. So it wasn't pulling any new clips share is obviously if you want to share this with other people then you can go through and do that and then playback is any of the cloud sort of recordings and everything so you can still access all that same information it's just in a different section in your events instead so coming into the settings quickly so the little three dots if i click on that so your alarm push you do need this enabled if you want to be getting those recording events you have settings you have edit you have top and then delete and some of these are if you've got it set up with individual cameras as well as this home base sort of monitor so when you actually connect this you scan the monitor and you're connecting to the monitor you're not connecting to each individual camera your edit and your top are basically more for when you have individual cameras or doorbells or other, other devices and you can rearrange them and delete is obviously if you want to get rid of any of the actual devices coming into the settings and yeah as you can see it is connecting to the monitor and not each individual camera so this is obviously giving you information on each individual device as well well as the actual monitor itself and as you can see it's used hardly anything in terms of storage you can come in and set your time settings manually you can change the password wi-fi all this kind of stuff that you could do on the device you can do on here as well and then once you click into the cameras and you've got a few different things now one thing i don't like is every camera defaults to sd so you do have to actually click on that little sd and change it to hd in order to get it to show in the proper resolution you have your mute or your audio section just there you have the option to take a photo as well as record a video so if we do just do a quick 10 second video on this main camera and it's exactly the same as the monitor where double tapping will make it full screen and then double tapping again takes you out of it you do have a few options so on this one obviously you've got one main big screen and then three little ones you can click this and click four and it lets you sort of filter between various different layouts if we click into the second camera as you can see it's once again defaults to sd so we do have to change that and then once it's sort of enabled then it'll allow us to actually record so same thing again we'll just record a quick 10 second clip of this camera view as well it would happen again and let's see if it will connect into this one so yeah we do have to change this one as well from sd to hd so the monitor is now in the other room so it's it's a little closer to where the cameras are actually located so this one one, no issues it will record once again we'll do 10 second clip and then you can see the the quality of it and then the final one will be the back camera which on the monitor itself it wasn't connecting mainly due to where where we are right now but yeah as you can see that's connected straight away so it was the location of how far away the monitor was well it possibly could have been because it was cycling through the other cameras first it wasn't getting to this one but yeah the one thing i don't like is the fact that you have to cy cycle every single one to hd otherwise if you take a photo if you take a video it will be recorded at like 580p or something like that it's it's not even 1080p resolution and then this final button on the side just cycles it into landscape mode you can actually go through you can make use of the ptz and any other functions that you want to make use of as well so you can also stretch the image to 
to go full screen on the actual phone itself and then to go back you just rotate the phone or you can hit the back arrow as well in the top left down at the bottom you have your ptz control all the time and then you have a few other options along the bottom for your presets i've not set any presets just yet if you did do then it would be very similar to a lot of the other cameras so along the bottom you have your cloud storage which as i said if you want that you can sign up for it you have your events which just a shortcut to the actual playback you have your microphone if you want to make use of the microphone you have your presets which you can go in and set individually for each camera and then if you go into more you can also set up cruise mode which would cycle and show you around now the reason i've not enabled that is because i wanted to test how well the batteries actually do you have your album section which is any recorded clips that you've done manually you have your ptz calibration which just sets the gimbal and everything on the actual unit itself you have your night vision toggle as well as your siren as well okay and the final thing is if you just hit settings on any individual one it shows you the battery charge status at the top so you can see 100 signal is medium and then it gives you all the normal kind of stuff that you get on the mains sort of settings you get that for all of the cameras individually as well so for each each individual camera you can come in and you can see all of that data as well so these first two were the ones that i was most worried about the garden ones as i said they always maintain 100 percent regardless of where they're placed and even the distance and the sort of usage as well the usage i must admit has not been as much i've been pretty much working six days for the past two three weeks and the kids haven't really delved out into the garden because it's been so hot recently <laughs> ironically um that yeah we've not really had as much recordings it does only detect people and yeah as you can see there it's it's switched back to sd even though i was literally just in this as well yeah that's that's the mobile app it does everything it works it's not as intuitive as i would like but it's definitely better than the monitor this is more what i would like to see from the monitor as well where it gives you this sort of events pane and it gives you everything in one section just like that but overall through my testing they've worked perfectly fine anytime a person's moved through the camera's sort of field of view it's it's made recordings and even in low light it's it's still managed to capture everything perfectly fine